Hello, this is uh, Tommy Seldor's vlog number one. Um, and before you ask, the uh, audio portion of that vlog will be published on a podcast platform. So if you're listening to that on your podcasting app, um, you can click on the link in the description to get to the video. Uh, but in all honesty, you're not losing much. It's basically me talking, uh, which I don't think is particularly interesting. So uh, you, can, you can continue to do so, what you're doing. However, if you watching that video on YouTube, if that's you, um, please go to a podcasting app or podcasting platform of your choice and subscribe to Tommy's Outdoors. You not only will be able to hear all the previous and future episodes of the podcast, but also you can take advantage of streaming and listen to the podcast while you're on your commute or while you're doing your yard work. Um, so, so that's that piece. So in the, in, the, in the first vlog, I would like to talk about uh, safety for sea anglers. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Uh, firstly, there is the winter coming and the winter storm season is coming. And uh, a lot of us anglers are uh, out on the shore and um, with the weather getting worse and the strong winds and waves, um, we can be in a, in a uh, you know, dangerous situation. Uh, so not only on the shore, but, but probably primarily on the boats or, or equally. So that's the one reason why I would like to talk about uh, safety for sea anglers. And another reason is uh, not that long ago, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was a big accident, big tragedy. Uh, three sea anglers uh, drowned when their their boat uh, capsized, and um, yeah, so that's a that's a big big tragedy, big loss, and uh, you know, um, hopefully, uh, if you're if you're uh, aware of the dangers, uh, perhaps. Um, tragedy can be avoided or maybe even uh, even some hairy situation can be avoided. So I just want to share a couple of my thoughts on the subject of safety for for anglers, for sea anglers. And I would like to share in the process a couple of uh, hairy situations that I've been in and uh, my, my colleagues been in. Um, so hopefully we can all learn from, from those. So the first thing I would like to address are those um, Growing in popularity, ribs, ribs, rib boats, uh, right? Ribs stands for rigid inflatable boat. And they are, you know, they are becoming quite popular uh, for angling. And I'm surprised by that because this is not vessel suitable for angling. It was not designed for angling, for anglers. Um, you know, rigid inflatable boat. That is exactly what it is. It's an inflatable boat. Um, Maybe instead of a of the floor, it has like a little hole, but it's still inflatable boat. It has a very low sides. Uh, it has this uh, um, jockey style seats. Uh, the ride is very wet on it, and and um, essentially it's a fun boat. It's a it's a boat for fun rides, not for angling, right? So. If you live somewhere where the seas are calm and there is a there is a nice weather and you know there is sunny and hot and girls are wearing bikinis sitting on those jockey seats water sprays all over them it's fun here in north uh, northeast atlantic i wouldn't recommend wearing bikini it's more like a cruise jacket or some other type of full weather gear um it's 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 wet it's uh it's not pleasant um and also you know when you're angling you're you're stopping the boat you're anchoring the boat um that type of a vessel doesn't doesn't handle that scenario very well it's it's meant to to, to move forward it's meant to be propelled by by often quite powerful engine um so as far as as uh, sea angling application i would probably not want to go uh, in that boat where I wouldn't go on a kayak, on a, on a sea-going kayak. It's, uh, you know, like, I, I think that probably uh, angling kayaks are more suitable for, for sea anglers than ribs. Um, 
it's just my opinion again uh, you know as i will in these in these things if you disagree or or have some other comments you know uh comments below uh, either podcast or video leave the comment and 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 tell us what you think um so so that's that part um one other thing i would like to say when you out on the boat on the boat out sea always wear wear your life jacket okay always always wear your life jacket those life jackets or even buoyancy aids are so you know thin and small and comfortable these days you know after 10 minutes you forget that you that you're wearing anything just just put it on don't don't let it lie on the on the on the in the boat because it's not gonna help you okay so do that and uh just uh just just for for a second to go back to the to the um accident that i mentioned apparently all three anglers were wearing the life jackets um so keep in mind that really what's uh, at the sea or in general in the water what's going to kill you is hypothermia okay water sucks out uh, uh temperature how sucks out heat out of your body very very quickly in a matter of minutes and uh and once that happened you're done okay so I remember one of uh, I was listening to the podcast I think uh, and uh, um, I think it was like a Navy SEAL who was you know so Navy SEALs are obviously military unit and they're trained in long swims and dives and like no one else and the guy was saying well the water is trying to kill you it's trying to kill you and it will kill you if you're not careful so so remember that um, from highly trained individual that uh, water water is trying to kill you it's a it's an element and uh, you gotta be you gotta be extremely uh cautious so where where are the safety jacket um so that's that part and and also on the on the sea angling if you're looking for purchasing a boat or vessel for sea angling there are purpose built angling boats like a, these warrior type boats um it's a proven design uh, for years, used uh, 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 you know in many situations. Um, purposely built angling boat, much better choice than than one of those rigid inflatable boats um, as for anglers or kayak. And um, speaking about the kayaks, um, this is uh, this is another. This is maybe we go a little bit into into the into the part when I'm going to share a couple of. Uh, hairy stories that happened to me and my my friends uh, and this is this is one of my friend who was who is a, a keen kayak angler and uh, what happened to him um, and that that story is probably right up there in the most um, dangerous and hairy situations uh, where uh, his kayak capsized and uh, he couldn't get back on, onto the kayak um so if you're if you're a kayak angler make sure you know and you can get back on it write it and get back on it and uh to make sure that you can do that the only way to do that is practice practice in some controlled setting um on the shallow water or maybe uh in the pool if you have that option make sure you know how to do it make sure it's it's not that easy as you think um, because you you won't you won't pull yourself onto the onto the kayak because it's obviously much lighter than you are, and you're just gonna be turning it. So you you can turn it back on. You write you can write it back on, um, but to get yourself onto it, you you need to you need to uh, practice that. You're you're essentially you cannot pull sideways. You need to use use its buoyancy. So press down and to press down, to essentially you need to press down, lift your body and put your chest on it and then kind of get on that. It's, it's easy for me to talk when I'm sitting here comfortably. It's much more difficult uh, if you never practice that. And especially in a situation where, the, when there is a, you know, cold water, your you know, waves, uh, you know, swells, your gear is, you know, down and at the bottom, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of in a shock there's cold uh in that situation it's difficult man so if you're a kayak angler practice getting back on the kayak um 
so that situation, uh, you know, uh, obviously ended up uh, with a with a luck, lucky outcome. Uh, unfortunately, lifeboat had to be involved um, to rescue my friend, and um, that's a uh, you know big shout out now to lifeboat and all the volunteers who works uh, uh, in the lifeboat to save life. So that was one um, kayak fishing. Make sure you know how to get back on it if it capsizes. Um, so now let's go to the uh, situations that can happen on the shore. And uh, obviously the rule of thumb is never turn your back to the sea. And the reason for that is to so see if the swells are coming, the waves are coming, so you can be ready. And if you're fishing from the rocks, and the water starts getting onto the rocks that where you where you're standing this is dangerous situation and i've been knocked off by the wave on the rocks that happened to me and um and you might think that you can withstand the the the, the incoming water but you won't it's a lot of mass it's a lot of uh weight that gets in and it cuts you off your legs and and you know you're down and once you're down you start to float once you float and whether whether where water goes back it can wash you back uh into the sea okay um so i've been lucky i've been uh, you know i've been uh, uh knocked off on the rocks uh um and you know that was like red flag like all right i'm done here but uh two of my buddies were fishing and uh one of them uh, was washed out into the sea. That's exactly what happened. Um, the, the, the water got onto the rocks, knocked them off, and one of them uh, basically was washed back into the, into the sea. And, um, and the other guy, the only thought of the other guy had like, what am I gonna tell to his girlfriend? You know. Um, again, lucky save, the, uh, he was washed back onto the rocks. So the next, next wave, Kind of put him back on on, on the rocks. It, it, you know, I guess this guy used up all his luck for the next fifty years. You know, um, because he could be equally easily smashed against the rocks, um, and that's that's again what 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 can happen. You're gonna be washed back washed to the sea, and then you don't have even opportunity to get back on your own because the next thing that happened, the the water smashes you against the rocks, and you're done. Um, so very, very dangerous situation, very lucky save um, and, uh, and a learning uh, and again. And again, uh, wear your life jacket if, you, if, if, if you're fishing from the rocks and, or in the, if you're waiting. Um, that, is, uh, that is a good idea. Uh, so beware of that. Uh, wind, waves, water getting onto a place where you're fishing, um, very dangerous. Um, Again, um, next thing to be aware of while, you, while you're angling from the shore is tide, you know, and, and tidal phenomena. Um, I've been almost cut off by tide, and that's a, you know, equally dangerous situation if you cannot get back on the land, if you cannot get back to the shore and you're cut off um, by incoming tide. And... Uh, the thing that is that catches people here is the the tide doesn't come the water doesn't come in a linear fashion it accelerates so um the amount of water that comes in the first two hours uh it's much much sl smaller than the amount of water that comes uh during next two hours okay and it, it essentially accelerates so quite often it's like well you know tide is coming in for past two hours and only this much water came in, I have another hour. No, you don't. Because in hour three, there is more water gonna come in in hour three than it came in hour one and two. You know, if, if you go like a tide comes, like, you know, give or take six hours, the majority of water comes between hour three and four. I don't, want, I, I don't remember exactly whether it's a 60 or 70% of the, of the water, of the volume of the water, but it 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 starts slowly and accelerates so beware of that and don't make a mistake that to to try to judge the amount of water that will come in in the next hour based on how much water came came in a, in a previous hour that's that's a very very dangerous situation and like i said uh i was fishing with my other good buddy and um 
uh, we, we were almost cut off. Uh, we, we were lucky enough that, you know, there was a, uh, pretty, you know, there was a, there was a swell on a, on the, and, and, and the waves are coming in and out and we kind of managed to jump, um, from one rock to another when the, when the water came out and that, that was it, but it, it was close. Um, and, um, so that was another situation. And finally, um, beware again, uh, talking about the tidal, um, phenomena and what's happening with tides. Um, if you're fishing in a sort of a bay, you know, I was, I was fishing in the mouth of the bay, uh, on like a sandy tongue. And what's happening when a tide, tide is coming in or, or out, it usually empties the bay in, in, in many scenarios where, where is a scenario like a bottleneck where you have a bay, but the bay is connected with the sea with a kind of narrow channel. And then what's happening is, is uh, you know, that bay needs to be filled and emptied of the water within the, uh, the, the time when the tide comes in and out. And what's happening during, in, this, in this narrow channel, there's a very, very strong current. Okay, very strong current. Uh, it's, it's essentially like a mountain river. Uh, that's, a, that's a comparison that springs to my mind. And uh, what happened to me, the, the tide was uh, ebbing. It, it was coming out. And uh, I was fishing on the, on the, on the, on the uh, edge of that, of that sandy tongue. And uh, kind of sand start, you know, kind of moving from under my my feet and and, and uh you know I was I was starting kind of sliding and, and slipping into the current into the outgoing current very very hairy situation um my my heart you know uh pulse when you know up through the roof uh I'm I you know I'm here so I managed to save uh my life literally uh, but be aware of that of those situations. Um, check the ground that you're that you're that you're on. Make sure it's solid. And if it's not solid, if it's sandy, always maintain safe distance from the um, deeper water when that when that current is when the current is going. And obviously, uh, all of us trying to get as close as possible uh, to the deeper water. Um, but that that you know that might cost you life. So don't do this. Um, some other, uh, um, kind of comments again, wear a, a life jacket if, if, if you're in this sort of scenario and remember when you in waders and you get into the water, um, they will fill up with water and drag you down to the bottom, like an anchor. Um, but this is also very dangerous and, you know, some people are saying like, well, no, they will actually, you know, keep, keep the air trapped and you will float, you know, like, uh, no, unlikely, much more likely situation is that the water will get into your waders and drag you down. And that's the reason why you never should wear waders while you're on the boat. For that reason, the boat capsized, you get underwater, um, you know, the, probably the first thing you would need to do then is just get out of the waders. And and again, it's not that simple because when you're getting into the water, uh, the 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 shock of the cold water, the thermal shock, is is plays huge uh, huge role here. You're not thinking clearly. You often panic. And and again, we can we can talk here to to death. You know, sitting and you know comfortably with this and that and with something else while you're actually in a situation is quite a quite a different uh ball game so make sure you remember about all these things um when you're when you're when you're out out fishing or or, or angling uh always pay attention to the weather always pay attention what the sea is doing uh you know whether there are huge waves small waves you know whether tide is coming in and out what time is it um i wrote a blog called safety in the outdoors it's available on tommysoutdoors.com on, on my website so go and uh, check it out um it's uh, you know i'm talking there about different things and then in this vlog so i i guess this vlog is kind of complementary to the blog 
Um, and um, yeah, that's it for 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 this uh, for the first vlog, Tommy's Outdoors vlog. Uh, leave the comment whether you like it, not like it, um, or any comments, safety tips, or maybe your own kind of closed shaved close shave stories uh, what happened to you so hopefully we can all learn about it and uh, that's it for today until the next time